It took a lifetime for us to upgrade our thermostats and give them smarts. Now in the space of just a few years, thermostats are evolving at a rate almost as fast as our smartphones. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and Nest, one of the best known smart thermostat makers, has just released its new fourth generation Nest thermostat. With a new look and some big changes, is this the time to bring a smart but pricey thermostat into your home? I'll tell you all about my experience and what using this new version is like. An early heads up that if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful to please hit that like button and give me a sub because it does help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy and learn from. It's important to understand right off the bat that the new fourth generation Nest thermostat is a budget version of the previous Nest learning thermostat. It's got a different look and a much lower price, but with that lower price come some trade-offs. One of the most noticeable differences between the fourth generation Nest thermostat and the third generation learning thermostat is that new look. Slimmer and more modern looking, the mirrored display gives it a whole new glow. There's also the price tag, where the third generation Nest learning thermostat would have set you back about 329 bucks. The new version is a much more affordable 179 Canadian. Nest also appears to have dumped the learning from the name of this iteration, and that's because more of the onus is now on you. The new trim kit, which is actually pretty nice with its flared backplate, is specially made for the fourth generation Nest thermostat. This also sells separately from the unit, which also probably contributes to the price drop here. The Nest thermostat will show you the current temperature on its display, and it can also detect humidity levels. So why get a smart thermostat? Nest's sales pitch is that getting a smart thermostat can help you save an average of 10 to 12% on your heating bills and 15% on cooling bills. It's not the kind of savings though that you see on the first month probably, but the kind that adds up over time and possibly could even offset the cost of the device. The other major advantage of a smart thermostat is that it offers control from anywhere in the house or anywhere in the world via the Google Home app and your smartphone. And you can, of course, ask Google to adjust the temperature for you just using your voice. So those features make it great for travelers in particular or folks who want to keep an eye on a second home or a cabin or a cottage. The new fourth generation Nest thermostat has a new app interface and it operates a bit differently than the third generation Nest learning thermostat. For starters, it doesn't use the previous Nest thermostat app or the Nest app. It uses the Google Home app only. The controls on the device itself are also different. In the Gen 3, you used a ring around the outside of the thermostat and a push gesture to make any adjustments. The fourth generation Nest thermostat is controlled by tapping and swiping on the side of the unit. No more moving parts. This interface isn't my favorite, but I guess it is better than dealing with tiny little buttons like you do on most traditional thermostats. Nest's third generation learning thermostat has learning in the name because that's a key component of what it does. It learns your schedules and habits over time and can adapt to heat or cool as you need it. That'll maximize efficiency overall by doing things like turning down the heat when you're asleep or away. The new fourth generation Nest thermostat needs you to program it and to give it an initial idea of the schedule, but it can also let you create three temperature shortcuts, I guess you could call them, to make things a little bit quicker. When it came to the setup, for me personally, the fourth generation Nest thermostat was not super easy to deal with. I don't have a C wire in my home heating configuration, and while the app initially told me I did need one, I was able to speak to a Nest rep by phone who told me it was actually not necessary. I was then able to successfully get the device working, but with some limitations. So do you really need a C wire? Without the C wire, the Nest does have those limitations, including things like reduced battery life, the motion sensing that turns the device on when you pass by it or come close to it, uh, that does not work. And you may see the occasional disconnection from Wi-Fi or notice unexpected activation of heating or cooling. I was able to get my Nest connected to Wi-Fi and working fine on my own with my vintage two-wire furnace connection. But after a few days, I did start getting an error message that read, disconnected from Wi-Fi, install C-Wire. And I also realized at that time that the motion sensing was not working. I had to tap on the thermostat each time to view it. The display was also not brightening fully. So since I'm all about having the latest technology in the house, I decided it was high time to upgrade my furnace wiring. 
Adding the sea wire involved having a master electrician with a specialization in furnaces and HVAC come to my house and run a new five strand wire from my hallway to the furnace. All told, this job took about two hours and cost about 300 bucks in case you're thinking about having it done. The sea wire now provides more reliable power to the Nest thermostat and it also gives me control for fan only operation, something I didn't have before. And if I ever did add air conditioning or a humidifier, I now have the connections for that too, thanks to that five strand wire. After installation of the sea wire, thanks to that wiring upgrade, I was able to get more reliable power, the motion sensing started working, and the display started functioning at a proper brightness. But when I went to reconnect the thermostat to Wi-Fi, it wasn't working. The furnace technician did stick around to help me for about an hour and we tried many things, including numerous resets and reconnection attempts to no avail. Eventually it was time for him to get to other jobs. After another hour or so of trial and error and checking things like my Wi-Fi and ensuring the home app was up to date, I was out of ideas so I called Nest's help center. We went through several troubleshooting steps to no avail again. The app seemed to be skipping the entire Wi-Fi configuration process. I finally asked if my old Nest learning thermostat that I was using could be the culprit. Assured that I wouldn't lose all of the learning it had done, I actually removed it from the Google Home app and started the setup process with the new thermostat over again. This time I did get an option to connect to Wi-Fi and the rest of the setup continued without issue. Bottom line here, if you are having trouble with your setup and you have a previous Nest thermostat, make sure you remove it from the Google Home app. If you need help, you'll be glad to know that I did get pretty quick and very helpful and patient customer service from Google Nest's helpline. Programming the new Nest thermostat is a bit different. You'll choose one of three preset but changeable modes, eco, comfort, and sleep. Comfort is the most comfortable and generally highest temperature, the one you'd keep it set to while you're at home. Sleep drops the temperature lower overnight to save on heating costs while you're under the covers. And eco mode is a lower temperature and more energy efficient mode, good for use when everyone's out of the house. Using the Google Home app to control my thermostat was easy. I was able to change temperatures, check humidity, and set and adjust my schedules. The app also lets me adjust my temperature shortcut preferences and check energy use. In the calendar section of the Home app, I can set schedules so the furnace will automatically adjust temperatures for me, and programming it was very straightforward. The other feature I really love about Nest Thermostat is the voice control and compatibility with the Google Assistant. What's the temperature in the hallway? I really liked being able to double check the temperature in my home just by asking the assistant and then calling for an adjustment if I needed to warm things up. I found the assistant was very responsive and easily able to control the thermostat anytime I asked. Let's talk energy savings. It is too early in the game for me to judge those energy savings. I've only had the nest running for a few weeks, but since I can track my energy use over time now, I will have to update this maybe in a year or so to see if the difference is indeed noticeable. Overall, I like the new Nest thermostat. I think the new design is really attractive. While this may not be as smart as the learning thermostat, it is still dead simple to program using the Google Home app. The scheduling and voice control also worked really well. Downsides? I definitely did notice reduced performance with my older furnace wiring, but upgrading that resolved my issues completely. I also didn't love the tap control interface on the side of the device, and there is no touch screen. Given that this new Nest thermostat costs about $150 less than the Nest Learning thermostat, it is now much more affordable though for folks who want to upgrade to a smart thermostat system. The all new Nest fourth generation thermostat sells for about $179 Canadian and you can get it from Google or Best Buy. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I talked about, head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've posted a full write-up. You can ask me any questions you have about this thermostat either there on the blog or as always here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can catch me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also find me through Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.